Okay, in this video we're going to look at how to calculate the cash conversion cycle. So let's take a look at our problem. The Coyote Company's annual sales are $730,000. It has accounts receivable of $67,000 and it has inventory of $30,000 and it has accounts payable of $36,000. If the cost of goods sold is equal to 40% of sales, what is the length of the Coyote Company's cash conversion cycle? So in this case, what we're looking for is to find out how long, on average, the Coyote Company's cash is tied up in this particular cycle. So the formula that we have is that the cash conversion cycle is equal to the inventory divided by cost of goods sold over 365 so that's cost of goods sold per day, plus the accounts receivable divided by sales divided by 365, so that is sales per day, minus the accounts payable divided by the cost of goods sold divided by 365. Now in this case, we are calculating the inventory conversion period here, and we are using cost of goods sold if it is possible. If it is not possible for you to find the cost of goods sold, then you could use sales there, but that would make it look like our inventory conversion period was shorter than it really was, because a larger number in the denominator would produce a smaller number here. So this is calculating how long it takes from when the goods come in the back door of our business to when they leave the front door of our business. So that is the inventory conversion period. This is calculating how long from the time that we sell the item, so when it walks out the front door of our business, to when we actually collect on the sale. And we are subtracting off here how long we have waited to pay our supplier. Now, as we have to have cost of goods sold for this formula, we need to find cost of goods sold from the problem if possible. So the problem states that sales are $730,000. It also states that cost of goods sold is equal to 40% of sales. So to find our cost of goods sold, our cost of goods sold is going to be equal to the $730,000 times 0 0.40, which is the percentage of sales. So at this point, you should pause the video and work that out. Okay, so if you pause the video and work that out, what you should have gotten was $292,000. So cost of goods sold is $292,000. So now let's come over here and let's put in some of the pieces that we have. So our cash conversion cycle is equal to the inventory value, which is 30,000, over cost of goods sold over 365. Well, cost of goods sold is 292,000, and 365. So there's our denominator, plus our accounts receivable. Accounts receivable are 67,000. And that is divided by sales over 365, so 730,000. Minus our accounts payable, which is $36,000. And then we have cost of goods sold, which we found up here, which is 292,000. over 365. All right, so at this point, what you should do is you should pause the video and you should work out this first piece. Okay, so if you pause the video and worked out this first piece, what you should have gotten was 37.5 for the number of days for the inventory conversion period. So it takes approximately 38 days from the time that the inventory comes in the back door of the business to the time that the inventory is sold. So it's converted to a sale in approximately 38 days. Now, the next piece that we need to find is this piece, which is the day's sales outstanding, or how long from the time the sale is made to when the sale is actually, or cash is collected on the sale. So at this point, you should pause the video and work this out. Okay, so if you pause the video and work that out, what you should have gotten was 33.5, which indicates that it is taking 33.5 days on average from the time that a sale is made to the time that the cash is collected. Now, this piece over here represents the delay 
and the time that between when the goods are purchased from our suppliers to the time that the goods are paid for. So in other words, this portion is talking about the delay from the time that we get the goods, convert them to a sale, from the time we've sold them to when we've actually collected the cash, but this is how long I waited to pay the supplier to begin with. So in other words, when those goods came in the back door of my business, I actually hadn't paid my supplier yet, and I waited a number of days. So this piece is telling me how many days we waited to pay the supplier, uh, if we're the Coyote Company. So in that case, you should pause the video and find out how long the Coyote Company is waiting to pay its supplier, or in other words, the payables deferral period. Okay, so if you pause the video and found out the payables deferral period, you should have gotten 45. So if you put these pieces together, what you get, and you should pause the video for a moment and find the answer. And coming back, if you pause the video and you worked it out, perhaps you did the math in your head, then what you should have gotten was 26 days. So the cash conversion cycle for the Coyote Company is a grand total of 26 days. So that means that it is taking the Coyote Company uh, 26 days from the time that it invests its cash to the time that it gets its cash back. So in other words, its cash is tied up in the cycle for a total of 26 days overall. And as a general principle, we typically like to have a shorter cash conversion cycle than a longer one. However, uh, if we shorten the cash conversion cycle, one way to do that is by shrinking the inventory conversion period, uh, which makes a sh for a shorter cash conversion cycle, but the way we shrink this potentially is by having less inventory relative to what we're selling, and we start running the risk of running out of inventory. Or maybe I shrink the day sales outstanding by not giving my customers as long to pay. And in that case, I could shrink this, which would shrink the cash conversion cycle. However, uh, if I shrink my... Um, credit terms for my sales, I might potentially lose some sales. So I have to weigh the benefits of, of shortening the cash conversion cycle with the downside of losing some sales. The other way to shorten the cash conversion cycle is to lengthen the payables deferral period. But if I lengthen the payables deferral period, it often involves missing discounts. And as one of the other videos that you hopefully have watched indicates, missing discounts is very costly on an annual basis, so we have to be careful about that. At this point, you should uh, try some of the similar problems and see how you do.